You have become so accustomed to your severely limiting life as a human that it seems normal. Humanity's awakening process appears very strange to many who are just now becoming aware that they are spiritual beings having a very temporary human experience. As they feel the nudge or hear the call to attend to their inner life, their spiritual life, having given it very little of their time or attention so far, it seems a little threatening and rather demanding. New interests or occupations often appear a little threatening to humans because they have become accustomed to following a regular routine that works for them and they do not like to change it, and new interests or new occupations always demand change. If sought they can be exciting and energizing, but if it seems that they are being imposed upon them they resist quite strongly. With the latter scenario they often go into denial and refuse to address the subject, change. Change is the only unchanging aspect of the illusion. Now, on earth, as those of you who read messages channeled from the spiritual realms are well aware, enormous changes are occurring, changes that can seem to be catastrophic as the old order and the routine it managed collapses. Conflict and violence are arising in many unexpected places as the karmic inheritance of thousands of lifetimes on the earth plane come to the surface of humanity's collective awareness to be acknowledged, accepted, forgiven, and released. And because the pain and suffering that is being unveiled is so intense, many are in shock. The safe little world in which so many sought refuge is proving to be nothing of the kind. It truly is providing an intense wake-up call for humanity, as it leads you toward your awakening into full consciousness, and that, despite all the appearances to the contrary, really is a reason to rejoice. To rejoice raises your vibratory field, and it inspires you encouraging you to allow your creative energies to flow. When they flow freely and you engage with them or run with them, your motivation to do so intensifies. You are creators just as God is. And when you are operating creatively, without judgment or anxiety, joy fills your heart. To create is to be godlike, and because God created you in his own image and likeness, you are, like him, creators. The human sense of being separate, an individual being apart from all others, encourages a sense of inadequacy because of the limitations that being human imposes upon you. That is, you see others doing things that you cannot do and you feel less than them. You then try to make up for that inadequacy by working harder, studying harder, and getting more qualifications in order to compete with those others and win. But the whole point of being human is to recognize your own creative side and develop that, which is quite different from anyone else's, in fact it is unique because no one is the same as anyone else. When you honor your own uniqueness, your own individual creative abilities, and then allow yourself to develop them, you find satisfaction and contentment, and no longer need to measure yourself against others and judge the differences between you as good or bad, right or wrong. And then, of course, conflicts do not arise. Conflict arises because your egos keep calling out, me, me, me. And they do that because they feel unsafe, threatened not only by the competences and abilities they see in others that they cannot see in themselves but also because they do not recognize as valuable their own different creative abilities. You cannot be as someone else, you can only be yourself, and yet in many cultures there is a continuous and ongoing collective judgment, suggesting that if only you could be like someone else you would be much happier, and so would those whose judgment of you you choose to accept as more valid than your own. But you are you, God created you perfectly as you, and he does not want you to try to be like someone else. To try and be a better person by being like someone else is to disown yourself and to disown the beautiful being that your loving father created. It is in effect a negative judgment of God. However, God does not take offense, he is perfect, infinite, unconditional love, and he completely and utterly accepts everyone. He makes no exceptions because he created you all as perfect aspects or parts of himself, except that you are not parts or aspects of him, you are one with him. To judge you would be to judge himself and that makes no sense. You need to focus intently and regularly on the divine truth that you and God are one. You need to keep reminding yourself of this. You have a saying in the large worldwide self-improvement community, 
fake it till you make it. Well, you have already made it, you are, due to religious, cultural, ethnic, and various other influences that have affected your human growth and development, just refusing to be aware of this. The original choice to experience separation from God by building the illusion and moving into it, included the choice to then be unaware of your divine heritage. You wanted to undo your eternal relationship at one with God and go it alone, detached, unzipped, disconnected from the source that is you. And with your enormously powerful creative energy you managed to construct an environment where it seems that you are alone, a very small and insignificant being in a vast and overwhelming cosmos. But of course you are that cosmos and all else that exists. There is only God. There is nothing apart from Him, and therefore you are Him, but with almost all awareness of that sublime state absent from your awareness, while you are in human form. To awaken, as you are doing, is to once again know yourself as one with God, inseparable from Him, and eternally creating with Him for the delight and joy of doing so. And that joy is utterly beyond description and beyond your ability to conceive of in your severely limited state of being as a human. You chose limitation because the idea amused you, but you did not realize how intense that limitation would be or how weak and feeble you would believe yourself to be while confined within a human body. The body is essential for your sojourn in the illusion and it can provide pleasure and enjoyment as well as pain and suffering but it cannot possibly embrace the fullness of the energy field that is God, that is love, that is reality. Were it to attempt to do so it would disintegrate instantly and very violently, and you would require a very long period of rest and recuperation from the shock of such a terminal event. The awakening process has been carefully and divinely planned to ensure that it occurs smoothly, gently, and with an intense experience of being loved. When you feel the love that is being offered to you, you will be unable to resist it or retreat from it because its attraction is so strong. It will draw you home, which is where, at the deepest level of your being, you always are. To awaken demands nothing of you. All you need do is to allow it to happen. You have become so accustomed to your severely limiting life as a human that it seems normal, and you are very reluctant to release your hold on it. It seems to most of you that your human body provides the only form of life available to you, and even if it is very painful you do not want to let it go. The purpose of going within daily to that holy inner sanctuary where the light of God's love burns continuously is to become gently acclimatized to love. Love is powerful. You have no idea how powerful it is, and when you know yourself once more as love, as you will, joy and wonder will flood into your heart the tsunami of love, as you become once more aware of who you are, the divine and perfect child of God, forever at one with Him in brilliance and glory. All wants, needs, and fears will have dissolved as the oneness that is God and you, are once more consciously recognized and most lovingly embraced. There is a well-known saying, home is where the heart is. And that is true. With so very much love, soul, Channeled by John Smallman. John Smallman